Hello there, this is Welsh ASMR 82. Hey, how are you doing? So, I wanted to do a video today about what's going on, <laughs> what on earth is going on at Tottenham. And this is an ASMR video, so I'm gonna keep it nice and calm just so you can relax after a hard day at work and maybe even fall asleep. But if you're just generally interested, then listen along. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click like. Okay, so I was thinking, you know, about what I was going to say in this video, like what could have been done differently. And I thought it'd be good if I just showed you. So I've opened up FM23. And um, yeah, a couple of things. I want to talk about a couple of things you can, you might want to persuade me to do an extra let's play um, <laughs> with a comment, that would be a good idea. So I fired up Football Manager 23 um, to put my thoughts down on paper and just show you what I would be doing if I were in there because it's just been a history of mistakes really. They, they managed to get Conte in, who lots of people considered to be better than the club, you know, of a higher level, one more suited to say uh, Man United, uh, Chelsea, uh, Real Madrid. Um, and they didn't give him a bit of money, but, and I'll show you what where some of the problems probably lie now. This is the club vision. I was hugely shocked because this game is a simulation. It's not, you know, a game. And it's, it seems like someone got this information from somewhere. It's plausible that Daniel Levy has been saying these things, right? And if this was what Conte was told, no wonder he was upset because my budget is 18 million. Okay, we're in the Premier League. I, I think it does reflect the fact that in this real life transfer window, so this is July 2022, some money has been spent. I hope, because if it's 18 million and I'm expected to do all this, then you are kidding me. Work within the wage budget. Maximum two year contracts for players over 30. Sign players under the age of 23 for the future. So a young team, notoriously difficult to achieve with. Develop players using the club's youth system. Okay, fair enough again. Do not sign players over the age of 30. So no free contracts handed out to, you know, um, players like, you know, Bales and Ronaldo's that are good and will improve the squad, but are old. Okay. I don't necessarily have a problem with that as such, but look at the, what is expected in the five year plan. End of the current season, reach the latter stages of the Champions League, which to be fair to them, they did actually do. Qualify for the Europa League. Okay, so it's not telling me I have to get into the Champions League. Um, reach the latter stages of the FA Cup. Be competitive in the EFL Cup. That's fair enough. But then, uh, next year, going from getting into the Europa League, they want me to challenge for the Premier League title in 2023-24. And it gets crazier. Challenge for the Champions League in 24-25 work towards winning the Premier League, work towards becoming self-sustainable, whatever that means. And then in 2025, 26, they want me to win the Champions League and the Premier League. So one, two, three seasons away, they want me to be better than Real Madrid. It's laughable. I mean, there's there's one thing saying challenge for, be competitive in, but they want me might my actual, like, required win the Champions League. Important maximum. That is insanity. I, I know they got into the Champions League final previously, but, like, that's not an expectation. You're talking about sides like PSG, Real Madrid, Man City, having expectations of getting to the Champions League final. And think of the money that they've got. Think of the absolute riches that they have. And my goal in three years' time, like a non-negotiable required at the highest level, 
and win the Champions League. Oh, and while you're at it, win the Premier League. It is absolutely shocking. Has Conte been told this? Ooh, right, okay. And I was told to play a certain type of football. Let me see what that is. So I was told that I had to play possessive, attacking, attractive football. I can't find it. Play entertaining football. This is the supporters, incidentally. the supporters whilst I'm winning all these trophies for me to play entertaining football attacking football, possession football and bring you through finish above Arsenal, be competitive against Chelsea, qualify for the Champions so they want me to qualify for the Champions League but Dan Levy is saying get into Europa League um, so there it, there's, I'm trying to, so the supporters want something different which says a lot but Conte wasn't playing entertaining football, he wasn't playing attacking football, and he wasn't even playing possession football. So is that why, if you're a Spurs fan and you're watching this, is that one of the issues that you had? Because for me, it was one of the issues that I had. Bearing in mind, I'm not a Tottenham supporter, but I am a massive Gareth Bale supporter, and I've watched Tottenham over the years with and without him in the team, um, kind of sympathetically, because I know that he loves the club. So I just got so bored of the tactics that Conte was using and failing in using as well. So that when they brought in, when they got rid of him after that little outburst, which I can kind of understand a little bit better now, if those were the expectations on his shoulders with no money and the time frame he's expected to do it in. But then the new guy just used the same tactics. Like he didn't literally change anything. No one, you know, like when you get a new manager and someone new gets a chance, right? But he just kept exactly the same squad. It was like it was just Conte clone. Um, so on one hand, is it Dan Levy's fault for employing him in the first place and not having a conversation of what are you going to do differently? Or is he to be praised because he saw that after four games it was just a clone and it was the same problems and just get rid of him? I can't decide. Maybe you can weigh in on that with a comment. Um... But yeah, I just, the running of the club is just so bad from the top down. And I'm actually more sympathetic towards Conte now because he did have a style of football that he did at Inter. He brought that with him. He wasn't given the money. He didn't have the natural ability in the squad already. And I mean, maybe all of this just kind of shows us that um, Mauricio Pochettino was doing an amazing job um, on very little. Right, anyway, this is what I would do. I've taken my same tactics from my Roma save. And I might give this a go over the weekend and give an update next week, if you ask nicely. Um, so I would play with a flat back four, not a five. I hate back fives anyway. And they've been playing poor Perisic as a left wing back. And it's like, he played for Croatia against Wales and ripped us apart. We managed to draw, I don't know how. He had about six shots on goal, one of which hit the crossbar and he hit it from like the corner flag. He just did this cross with the outside of his left foot. It was insane. Anyway, and I remember turning to my brother watching the match and I was like, where's he been all season? And I thought, oh, I know, he's been defending. So for me, Son starts, um, but then Perisic will be up here. Kulusevski is there, but then you got... Um, Mura to come in and then you got Kane and Richarlison up front um, so the, the front three pick themselves for me but they have actually got quite decent sort of um, alternatives I know they've been struggling with the fact that Son's just been off colour and Richarlison's not scored when he's come into the team but you know hopefully in real in this isn't real life this I'll have different issues to deal with but the back four, well, okay, so basically the front three are fine. <laughs> and that's where my problems start. The middle three don't fit into any of the systems I want. And the back four are clobbered.
together, let's put it that way. Davis, I think, is a better left back um, than anyone else they've got. And I trust him as a Welshman. Porro is not a true right back. He's actually like, he could be even a right midfielder. I might even tempt and use him instead of Kulosevsky if Kulosevsky were to get injured. But my alternatives are f very few and far between. Emerson Royal, I'm not a massive fan of. Maybe he'll surprise me. You never know. Um, and then Tangaranga can play there as well. But yeah, he, he might do okay there actually. Romero starts for me without a shadow of a doubt. And next to him, I don't have a clue. Like, I mean, do I even put Davis as a, as a makeshift centre back? Because Sanchez is nuts. Eric Dyer is just awful. And I never liked Longley when he was at Barcelona anyway. Maybe he's my best bet. But Eric Dyer is a star. I'm going to put her up for sale. 50 million, you are absolutely kidding me. If someone gives me 50 million for him, I'll be laughing all the way to the bank. Like literally laughing. And then go, Yoris, on paper, he's fine. In real life, he's having a bad season, but Forster's a good backup as well. And then I've got Danuma to come in. Moore and Perisic and Richarlison, as I talked about. Cessignon can maybe fit in a left back as well. I know he's quite attacking. These are on um, support. So if they were to attack, that'd be okay. Um, so yeah, we need to talk about the midfield. Oh my god. Okay, so individually, Bisuma, Hoiberg, and Bentancur are excellent, but they kind of all do the same job. I want to have a Mitsala who attacks. There is no one in this team that can do that. Maybe Kulisevsky can. Mm, I don't think I'd like to put Perisic through the middle. No. It said it offered me. Um, Kamuru. Not really. So, of the three of them, I thought the most attacking was Bentanku, although he'd be much better in the deep lying playmaker support role that Bisuma's in. But I put Bisuma back there because his tackling's actually 17 and his marking 14, so he's the better defensive individual. He's usually a ball winning midfielder, though, so he's not that creative. And then Hoiberg in the box to box because of his energy levels. Stamina 20, natural fitness 20. He's, a, he's an absolute uh, tank in midfield, isn't he? I'd really like him. He's had a tough time. Yeah, he's had a tough time this season. I think that um, he's, he's actually a pretty decent player. Okay. He could maybe go in that role, but I don't think he's that creative. So I'm struggling. I'd like to play Bentanku there. And have Bisuma. I don't know where Bisuma really fits in. Carrying on a box to back. Yeah, you could do a box to box role, I suppose. So that's my issue there. I need someone who is more attacking. Matsala should be um, central player, likes to drift wide and operate in half spaces. Essentially a central half winger. Maybe Kulisewski could do it. Who likes to do his defending slightly further up the field, although he generally has less defensive responsibility. With an attacking duty, which I have put, he'll often leave his midfield responsibilities to his teammates while mainly looking to make attacking contributions in the final third, so very little. Hmm, I'm convincing myself here. Probably could do it. Metzala. Hmm, yeah, he probably could, actually. And then, what, put Moura on the wing? Maybe even move Porro up and put Emerson Royale at the right back? Not ideal, but could do. What's Emerson Royals? I'll go back into him. Wing back defensive on support. He's okay. He'll get forward though, he's got a good engine. Stamina 16, yeah. So yeah, that's what I would do. Um, so I'm going to put my money with my mouth and maybe play a couple of games and let you know how I get on. Um, so drop me a comment if you want to see that video. And yeah, I just kind of think that, you know, they just don't have enough players 
to do the job with too high expectations and very little money. I think Dan Levy is asking for the world and not really giving anything in return. And I think it backfired because they're going to lose Kane this summer. At the very least, Son's not happy either. Um, yeah, and I think that, you know, they're in trouble, basically. And, um, which is stupid, because they, up until a day ago, they were in, uh, in for a shout with the Champions League, right? So tell me what you think. Do you think that the, my tactics are just absolutely terrible? What would you do? And do you think I've missed anything? Do you think that Dan Levy's um, spot on? He's asking, he's doing the right things, he's made the right decisions? Or do you think that, you know, having Conte was a good thing in the first place? Do you think you should have got rid of him? I think that they he left them in no position to keep him going, to be honest with you, the things he said in that. Well, you know, you're spot on. But ultimately, he's not in charge. Um, Dan Levy is. So if he criticizes Dan Levy in a press conference, he's not going to win, is he? So um, do you blame Dan Levy? Do you blame Conte? Do you think he should be more attacking? If so, why did they go for him? Because he's not that sort of coach. I don't know. I just... It'd be interesting to see what happens next. Um, because they can have a weaker squad probably the next year than this year, if they lose Kane. And um, they've got a lot of unhappy players. But it's bizarre at the same time because I've been saying this for months. People talk about Tottenham as if they're in the relegation zone. They're not. They're like a couple of points from the Champions League. But why is everyone so unhappy? It just seems everyone looks really unhappy at the club. So yeah, weigh in and let me know. Okay, I'm going to go and play this. I'll uh, leave you to it. Press like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and drop me a comment. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.